Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Is there a chance Bear County could see a spike in COVID cases after Thanksgiving? Experts say yes, but it all depends on how the community protects itself. Tips from a local doctor on to make sure your family stays safe this holiday season coming up in a live interview. Hey, do you know this guy? Absolutely not. Oh. Okay. New developments in that deadly Christmas parade incident in Wisconsin. David Sears shows you the moment a man realizes he befriended a fresh criminal. A nonprofit organization providing hot meals for those in need this holiday season. Coming up, we'll take you to Haven for Hope's Kitchen, where meals are being prepared. Good morning to you. It is Wednesday. November 24th, Thanksgiving Eve. Thanks for joining us. Doesn't feel like Thanksgiving, not yet, but things will start to change tomorrow. We'll talk with Justin in just a minute. We will begin with travel and the travel rush has begun. You are looking wow. live right now at the crowds and the traffic at Los Angeles International Airport where the sun is just now coming up. And by the way, we had lines like this at our airport, even as of midnight last night into this morning, picking up people picking up loved ones oh um, for the holiday rush. Oh my goodness, a lot of people traveling and we'll take a look at the misery map thanks to flightaware.com. Now, so this map shows what the flight delays are like around the country. So you can see that's happening everywhere. Yeah, the major ones are the bigger airports, the major hubs, mm -hmm. places like New York and Washington, Chicago. But the biggest delays right now appear to be in the New York metropolitan area. Uh, but not a whole lot of cancellations as of right now. Cross our fingers. A lot of people are traveling for the first time in roughly two years as we go into the holiday weekend. Well, back here at home, the San Antonio Food Bank is providing a hot Thanksgiving meal for those in need. This morning, staff and volunteers are preparing meals for shelter residents at Haven for Hope. Tiffany Huertas joins us live from the facility's kitchen. And Tiffany, talk to us about what's happening there this morning. Good morning, Mark and Stephanie. It's all about love, community, and giving back this holiday season. Here at this kitchen at Haven for Hope, there's so many different volunteers and staff members working really hard to prepare those meals this holiday season. And joining us right now is Eric Cooper with the San Antonio Food Bank. Good morning and thank you for joining us. Yeah, hey, good morning. You know, our team got here about 5 a.m. Volunteers, all of our kitchens are working hard to prepare Thanksgiving meals in addition to the groceries that we deliver to families. But here side by side <laughs> are some turkeys, 280 turkeys just for wow. this kitchen. Now the meals that are prepared here at Haven for Hope will serve the homeless both for the campus and the courtyard. We'll also be purveying some of those meals out to other shelters where people are gathered to give their staff a little bit of a break and make sure everyone has a great Thanksgiving. But this wouldn't happen with the Lout USAA. They've actually sponsored the Thanksgiving meal to make sure anyone in a shelter knows that they're loved for Thanksgiving. And this isn't the first time you all do this on the holiday season. No, you know, and hunger doesn't know a holiday. We're doing this 365 days a year, three meals a day, but it's this meal of the year that it's more than just food. It's about the tradition, it's about family, um, and it's about love, like you said. And so to be able to be here with volunteers to make this happen for so many in our community, it's pretty special. There's so many things people can do to help. Can you mention some of those things right now? So maybe people watching at home. Absolutely. So, you know, the biggest thing, if you'd like to get involved tomorrow, there's a 5K run that's been our turkey trot. The funds from that help to put turkeys on the table for families. You can also volunteer. Now go to our website, safoodbank.org. You can volunteer here in a kitchen, helping to make meals, warehouse, packing boxes, farm and garden, actually growing and helping us harvest crops, but, um, or at a distribution. So, I mean, there's lots to do. All ages are welcome. Volunteering and donations are the two big things we need right now. Well, I'm so excited to have you here with us this morning. There's so much information you can share with us later on. Coming up in the next half hour, we're going to bring you more of those volunteer opportunities and what else you can expect from Haven for Hope and all the volunteers and staff here. Back to you guys in the studio. All right. Thank you, Tiffany. Busy morning over there. Yeah, it's very busy. Thank you. Taking a look outside with live cam, we're up to 64 degrees now. We started off not so cold, though, in the 50s. Wish you made a difference. Yeah, we had humidity move in and that brought in cloud cover. It kept temperatures up, so not near as cold as it was yesterday. This humidity will eventually lead to some showers and storms tonight 
and early tomorrow morning with the front moving in. So where is that front right now? Let's track it here across the state of Texas. It's just starting to move into Amarillo. So we have some time here and you can see those lines on the map that represents the wind and it's coming in off the Gulf of Mexico. So that is that moisture surging in out ahead of this cold front. So most of Texas today will be fairly mild, but that changes tomorrow as that front comes through. Take a look at the time lapse. You can see some clearing there off in the distance, but that quickly goes away as these clouds sort of uh, thicken up a little bit here over San Antonio. 65 degrees dew point is an important number there. It's at 58. That's that increasing moisture with southerly winds at 10 to miles per hour. Temperature wise in the 60s for the most uh, most of us 59 Holotus, 63 Canyon Lake, 60 New Braunfels. Now as you get out towards uh, our southeastern counties, the sun is out and there's going to be some peaks of sun, I think today, but by tonight the clouds will really thicken up and again that may lead to some rain. Here's how I think the forecast plays out this afternoon. 673 by 2 o'clock, 75 by 4 p.m. Southerly winds will pick up 10 to 15 miles per hour. But that's nothing compared to what the winds are going to look like tomorrow. Some gusts up to 35 miles per hour on your Thanksgiving day. A cold front again brings some showers and storms. We're going to break down that forecast for you uh, almost hour by hour coming up here in just a few minutes, guys. Justin, thank you very much, folks. We've had some problems on the roads this morning. We had an incident earlier. It looks like the uh, frontage road is still closed out there at 10 and 1604 area. A lot of construction already taking place out there despite the holiday and the roads, as you might imagine, especially the freeways are quite busy at this hour. Yes, we can. And for now, let's look at today's nine at nine. Another child has died from injuries sustained in the Wisconsin parade attack and has now become the sixth victim in the massacre. The suspect, Daryl Brooks, is behind bars on a $5 million bond. Jurors in the trial of three men accused of killing Ahmad Arbery will continue deliberations this morning. Defense attorneys say the men were trying to detain Arbery for police because they thought he robbed a neighbor's home. After a scuffle over Travis McMichael's shotgun, Arbery was shot and killed in what the defense claims was self-defense. If found guilty of murder, the trio could face life behind bars. New details in the Brian Laundrie case. The autopsy report shows he died from a self-inflicted gunshot wound to the head. His remains were found last month in Florida. Laundrie vanished days after his fiance, Gabby Petito, disappeared. Officials say she died from strangulation. Governor Greg Abbott has officially filed for re-election. If re-elected, this would be his third term in office. Former President Donald Trump gave Abbott his stamp of approval earlier this summer, which analysts say could help Abbott's campaign. The 2022 Texas gubernatorial elections take place in November of next year. More computer chips will soon start flowing out of Texas. Samsung has picked the Lone Star State for a new $17 billion semiconductor plant. They'll start construction outside of Austin next year, and it should begin pumping out chips in late 2024. The infamous Dollar Tree, where everything is literally a dollar, will no longer hold up to its name. Beginning next year, the store is increasing prices by 25 cents to make everything cost $1.25. Dollar Tree says the price hike is not due to inflation, rather to give them more flexibility to bring back customer favorites and also introduce new items. NASA had a successful launch for their DART mission overnight. The spacecraft on its way to crash into an asteroid on purpose. Next September, NASA will see if crashing their rocket into an asteroid will redirect the giant rock. The idea is to be prepared for the highly unlikely event that a huge asteroid is threatening Earth. If you haven't already hit the road for Thanksgiving travel, tonight might be your best and last window for clear roads. Transportation analytics company NREC says between 9 tonight and 11 a.m. tomorrow is the best time to travel. AAA expects nearly 4 million people will hit the roads this year. A highly anticipated film featuring pop superstar Lady Gaga premieres tonight. House of Gucci is about power, greed, fashion, and ultimately murder. The executive producer says she has been trying to make the film for 20 years. You can watch it in theaters tonight. That is today's 9.
I realized I should have delivered that line differently. I should have said murder. <laughs> that would have been appropriate. House of Gucci again. Uh, COVID outlook in Bear County right now is low. So will that number rise after Thanksgiving? With millions traveling in and out of the city, experts fear another spike in cases could, could be possible. But will vaccines help keep numbers down? So for more, we bring in pediatrician for University Health and professor at UT Health San Antonio, Dr. Dina Tom. Hey, good morning. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Well, first off, is it safe to gather this year for Thanksgiving? Yes, I think that it is safe to gather, but I think we all have to take some precautions in doing so. So, um, you know, the CDC has laid out some really wonderful advice about that, and it's been published in the New York Times as well. But I think that in safe numbers with people that, um, you know, are close to your family, I do think that it's safe and it's important for people to gather. For those who are traveling or maybe have family coming in from other parts of the country, what is your suggestion for them? So I think there's a few things that we can do to be together. So I think number one is assessing our risk. So amongst your family members, it's really important to have the conversation about who's vaccinated, who's at risk for infection, and, um, and deciding the number that's going to be together and whether or not that um, you guys can celebrate outside safely or inside and wearing masks in between being together, not sharing utensils, being careful when you're traveling in airports and through gas stations across the country. But I do think we can safely do that. Paying attention to our local positivity rates within our cities is also important. But um, just having that conversation is really important so we can all protect each other and come away with it with good memories instead of coming away with infection. And let's say someone watching has a family member who is not vaccinated but will be attending the gathering. What would you tell that person? Yeah, so at this point, I don't think it's probably the best um, time to have that conversation about um, in terms of getting in any kind of debate or anything because there's not enough time to become fully vaccinated, even if somebody felt compelled to do that. So I think really just being honest with family that you all want to be together safely, but we want to protect one another. And I, I do think that, you know, studies have shown the most likely um, influence to, to convince someone to get the vaccine is knowing that a close family or friend or um, close family member or friend has been vaccinated. So it might be a good opportunity to have that conversation, but otherwise, making sure people are wearing their masks. If you're not vaccinated, totally fine. Having that celebration outside and not sharing utensils are important so we can protect our most vulnerable. Dr. Tom, I think you sort of answered this last question, but I'm gonna ask it anyway. <laughs> By now, sure. most adults are likely vaccinated, but what about children gathering with families this year? Obviously, we're you know less than a day away from Thanksgiving beginning. Is it too late for them to get their vaccination for this to be a factor? So it's not too late to start. It's always good. And getting that flu shot too is important this year. Getting that first vaccine for COVID, it's never too late to go ahead and start. But just understanding that it does take some time for that to be truly, you know, um, protective. For children, I'll be the first one to say that my children um, volunteered and um, were a part of the early study to get vaccinated. So they are fully vaccinated and they've done so well and we feel a lot less pressure in going out in public and, and visiting with family members. But go ahead and talk to your pediatrician about it. Go and get them done if you can to start that process. Um, I think it's a great way to have a positive conversation with your family members. All right, Dr. Dina Tom, thank you for joining us and happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving, Dr. Thank Tom. Thank you, you too. All right, time right now, 9-11, about 64 degrees. Still ahead on this Thanksgiving Eve edition of GMSA at 9. A new production just opened at the Woodlawn Theater. R.J. Marcus has details on Elf, the musical. But first, a deer looking to learn how this buck ended up in a high school classroom. That's next in your morning headline with the David Sears. In the morning headlines, one that suspect who ran over and killed six people and injured over 40 when he uh, plowed right through that parade route in Wisconsin. And something even a little strange for Vegas and a deer goes to school. We'll explain. Morning, David Sears. Give the deer some credit. Showed up on a Tuesday, so he only had Tuesday and Wednesday, and he's off for the holidays. So, ah. you know.
<laughs> we'll have that for you in just a <laughs> second, the full story. But first, let's start with this. This story just gets more tragic and more bizarre as we go. As we mentioned a couple of minutes ago in the night at night, another child has died from their injuries after being hit by the driver of that SUV who plowed right through a Christmas parade in Wichita, Wisconsin. Now to the bizarre of this story. This is the man accused of driving that SUV. He is walking up to the front door of just a random house. This is all caught on ring camera. Daniel Ryder was home at the time watching football, had no idea about the crash. Brooks claimed he was homeless, so Ryder invited him in, fed him, gave him a jacket, and then let him use his phone. Brooks said he wanted to call an Uber. When Ryder saw police outside, he asked Brooks to leave, but then Brooks came back to the door claiming he left his ID in the house. Here's that entire exchange. Hey, can I, I call some, I called an Uber. And I'm supposed to be waiting for it over here, but I don't know when it's coming. Can you call it for me, please? I'm homeless. My ID. My ID. Amazing how a lot of all transpired. Brooks was arrested at that house on Sunday. Then yesterday he made his first appearance in court. Now that another child has died, the charges against Brooks have changed. Today we learned of another death of a child related to this case. We do expect a sixth count for first degree intentional homicide to be issued or added, excuse me, to this case. Once again, that was the county district attorney. Brooks has been in trouble with the law since the late 90s when he killed those six people and injured more than 40 this past Sunday. He was out on $1,000 bail for domestic abuse charges. This time his bail was set at $5 million. His next trip to court will be in January. This one is weird even for Vegas. You're looking at turtles and they are for sale by those folks right there. Now, these guys just set up right there on the corner of Flamingo and Las Vegas Boulevard. The turtles are poor red-eared sliders. What these guys are doing is illegal. When the turtles were not on display for sale, they were stuffed in suitcases. And these guys got caught, and now the turtles are with the Animal Foundation there in Vegas. These guys need to be in a tank. They need to have food and light source. And so just being out and about on the strip being sold is not ideal for them at all. As an open admission shelter, we take anything that comes in the door. So if that looks like 80 turtles, we're going to take care of them. So one of the problems with selling these little guys, they're not going to be little for long. They'll grow to be a foot in diameter and they'll need a pretty big tank or an outdoor pond to continue living. And finally, oh dear, Literally, Bucky decided it was time to get a little education and showed up in class yesterday. The good news is he was early to school and there were no other students or teachers in the room when Bucky got there. He's in a classroom in a Springfield, Tennessee elementary school. The big buck actually broke through an emergency door sometime before the bell rang and ended up locked in that classroom. When administrators showed up, they called Caleb Stratton for some help. When I walked in the school, they said he's really cute. And I said, what do you mean he? And, and uh, not thinking, thinking it was a doe, a female deer, not a buck. So uh, once I found out it was a buck and I saw it in the classroom, I was like, this is going to be hard. I don't know if it works, but I act like I'm talking to a person when I'm talking to a deer. Hey, whatever it takes. <laughs> <laughs> Please, Buck, come on. Caleb says deer are running wild this time of year because it is mating season. Uh -huh. So apparently a buck will do anything he has to do to he find the Looking right. for a high school sweetheart. Well, yeah. elementary school. He ordered the half rack, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Little uh, missing, a, missing a horn. Must have lost it when he came through the door. It's very possible. But so, otherwise, he looks like he's none the worse for yeah. wear. Good looking antlers, though. Well, yeah. it's half. So. Antler. <laughs> Antler. <laughs> Thank you, David. Well, if you're headed to the airport to pick up a loved one uh, in the next couple of hours, we are taking you live to San Antonio International. Yeah, it uh, looks pretty busy there. Mark, you were saying it was busy even overnight? Yeah, a friend of mine posts a picture uh, long lines at the airport even as of uh, midnight. Justin Horn joins us now. Justin, I understand you did a drop off and yeah. the line 
The traffic line was insane. How far was it backed up to? It was uh, backed up all the way to that light. That was for people picking up, though. So wow. I was dropping off my wife and my daughters yesterday, and it uh, it scared me a little bit. I didn't think I was going to get them there in time, but the departure line was quite a bit. Short. So was it the first light there by the convenience store and cell phone lot, or the second light closer to the airport terminals itself? Second light. Gotcha. It wasn't that okay. far back, but yeah. that uh, it was as crowded as I've ever seen it. So I'm not surprised. Yeah, I think a lot of people are headed to San Antonio for Thanksgiving. At least that's the way it looked. Uh, if you are celebrating Thanksgiving here in San Antonio tomorrow, keep in mind we've got a cold front coming through and that's going to bring a variety of weather. Here's a look at the temperatures. It's chilly up there at Casper 26, 31 in Bismarck. But look, this isn't a strong cold front in the sense that we're going to get a ton of cold air. It will cool down, but it's not going to be just bitterly cold. Uh, we're seeing that front starting to enter Texas. It's 56 in Amarillo, 57 in Wichita Falls. We've got good southerly flow here. Some moisture is streaming back in. That's going to keep temperatures pretty comfortable today. We're at 65. It did not get all that cold this morning. And there's a look at the dew points surging up now into the 50s and 60s. So that's that moisture that's pushing into Texas ahead of this cold front. Here's the scene outside. We've got cloudy skies, 65 degrees, southerly winds at about 10 miles per hour. And don't expect a whole lot of sun today. I do think there'll be a few breaks, and we're seeing some breaks uh, down there to our south and east. Uh, 63 Port SA, 62 in cloudy at Randolph. 59 in Seguin, a few breaks in the clouds there. Floresville seeing some sun. Uh, 67 in Kennedy and sun there, but cloudy as you go west. 62 in Uvalde, 63 right now in Del Rio. Our forecast today calls for mostly cloudy skies. We'll be in the 70s, 75 by 4 o'clock, so a, a warm day. But then rain chances start to move back into the forecast by 6 p.m. We'll start to see a few showers developing. Those clouds will thicken up. And then tonight, I think we have about a 60% chance of rain. Now, it's not going to rain all night long. But some showers and even a couple of thunderstorms may pop up, so don't be surprised if you hear a few rumbles of thunder. We're not expecting severe weather, but there could be some pockets of heavier rain. Here's how that forecast plays out. So we'll fast forward to about 1 a.m. There you see some of those thunderstorms trying to develop. We'll see that through about 7 a.m. And then we'll get a broken line of showers and storms with this front. We think it'll be here in San Antonio about 9 a.m. There is that broken line I'm speaking of, some heavier rain to the east and southeast of this front. And then by midday, those showers and storms are pushing south. So the rain moves out of here by lunchtime. And we may see a few showers linger to the south of San Antonio through the evening hours. But I think the rain essentially ends midday, and then we're left with cloudy to maybe mostly cloudy skies during the afternoon. This model still shows a few showers hanging around to our south and west through the evening hours. So here's a timeline for you. 60% chance of rain in the morning. We'll keep that going through 9 a.m. By noontime, 30% chance of rain, but the rain is winding down. Notice the temperatures fall into the 50s. It will also be windy. Gust to 35 miles per hour possible. By 3 p.m., just a 10% chance of rain. We'll call for just windy and cool conditions at 6 p.m., 57 degrees. We mentioned those winds. Yeah, I think we could see a few gusts up around 35, so it is going to be sort of a blustery day, if you will. And as far as rainfall goes, the bigger numbers will be closer to the coast. Generally speaking, a tenth of an inch to a quarter of an inch. You could see a little bit more rain if you get underneath one of those heavier thunderstorms. The extended forecast will go 60 on Friday, 57 Saturday. Another chance for just some light showers, 65 Sunday, and we're back in the 70s next week, guys. Some cold mornings ahead, though. Yes. Thank you, Justin. Right now, 924, about 65 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA at night. We're going to introduce you to the artist responsible for dozens of murals in San Antonio and how his journey of wall painting has developed over the years. Welcome back. It's 927. It's all sunshine and blue skies for one local artist. At least that's the running theme in most of the murals Jimmy Ramirez paints these days. Take a look. His artwork adorns the inner walls of businesses all over San Antonio and beyond. Some of it elaborate. Some took months to complete. When Ramirez first started out more than 40 years ago, his focus was on painting signs. Back then, we really didn't paint on walls. If it was not an advertisement, you really didn't paint on them. 
And recently he was worried that his painting days might be over when a thief stole his van along with his art supplies. So you can find out more about how he's doing now in this week's If These Walls Could Talk. You can head over to our website at kset.com. There's more ahead on CMSA at 9. And let's go ahead and take a live look inside the San Antonio Food Bank where Thanksgiving preps are underway. So next we're taking you inside for a look at how you can get involved. And later if you're headed to San Antonio Airport this month, uh, next month rather, there's a new food option inside that might interest you if you have the time. RJ Marquez is here to tell you more about that. A couple top stories we're following for you this morning. A San Antonio police officer uh, was in the hospital last check after a crash on the city's south side. Police responded to the 1100 block of Southeast Military and Roosevelt around 2.30 this morning. They say a woman driving a truck was heading westbound on Southeast Military when she hit the officer who was headed southbound on Roosevelt. Police say the woman was arrested for suspicion of driving under the influence. A field sobriety test was done on the scene. The officer was taken to Mission Trails Hospital and is expected to be okay. Also new this morning, a man in the hospital after police say he grabbed a hold of a moving train. SAPD says a man was sitting on the tracks at South Stars and in Hazel just before 11 last night. They say the man saw the train coming, stood up and grabbed the handle of one of the train cars he was pulled underneath. He was rushed to University Hospital in critical condition. And this holiday season, many organizations around town are busy preparing and giving food. San Antonio Food Bank staff and volunteers are making meals for shelter residents at Haven for Hope. Tiffany Huertas joins us live from Haven for Hope's kitchen. Tiffany, what are they making this morning? Is it the pretty typical Thanksgiving fare? Yes, but it smells so good. I'm getting so hungry right now, and so is everyone else in here. Just check it out. Volunteers and staff from the San Antonio Food Bank ha are serving turkey, mashed potatoes, and other delicious side dishes. This year, the Food Bank has seen a lot more requests for help. And to, to talk a little bit more about this, Zara Cooper with the San Antonio Food Bank. Good morning, and talk to us about all these requests that you're getting this year. Well, I tell you, the pandemic has ushered in a lot of demand, and the cost of turkeys being as high as they are, this is actually the most expensive Thanksgiving ever. And so filling that gap is the food bank. And we've been giving families groceries, the turkeys at our distributions. And then through our kitchens, we're actually preparing meals. And thanks to USAA, all shelters in San Antonio are offered a prepared meal. Thousands of meals will be fed in the shelters. And then in addition to that, we'll be doing some home deliveries of some Thanksgiving meals. But I think the most important ingredient into these meals is love. Yes. And uh, we want to make sure families know they're loved on Thanksgiving. Talk to us about who's behind all of this. The volunteers have been here since what time this morning? Yeah, so five o'clock, the staff and volunteers, but really have been working all week long to make sure all the logistics, all the ingredients are here. Um, we couldn't do our work without volunteers. So if you have some extra time and you'd like to get involved, just go to our website register to volunteer and you can make a difference. We've got a huge opportunity Thanksgiving morning. Now we have our annual turkey trot. It runs through downtown and all of that registration funding goes to cover Thanksgiving meals for families. And so please, if you'd like to do the turkey trot tomorrow, it's a great way to get some exercise before the big turkey day. And what does this mean to you, seeing all of this unfold? You know, it's incredible. I mean, just, it's been a lot of stress, worried that a family's not gonna get a turkey and we've been working hard to collect. But when it all comes together tomorrow and you see someone enjoy a meal, uh, that's what it's all about. Well, thank you for your time this morning and happy Thanksgiving to you and your family and to all the volunteers and staff at the San Antonio Food Bank. Yeah, thank you and happy Thanksgiving to everyone in San Antonio. Yep, back to you guys in the studio. Thank you, Tiffany. Happy, happy Thanksgiving. And we want to go ahead and give you an update on our progress for No Save November. That's right. Okay, I'm just pulling up the latest now. Here's how things are going as of right now. KSAT's goal was $10,000, and remember, we still have just under a week to go. As of right now, we've raised $11,181. Wow. Congratulations, guys. I was trying to pull that up as well. Mm -hmm. uh, is Mike still at the top of the leaderboard? He is, and as a matter of okay. fact, I want to check real quick. So there it is. There's the latest. There and Steph, if you can read those off, I'll look at the national leaderboard, too. Okay, so you see Mike there with over $2,000. Uh, for a while, Stephen Cavazos was at the top with his $1,505. 
Mark, you are in third with 1,186. And yeah. Justin Horn, you know, you're climbing up there at 961. Very good job. Max Massey is at 800. So those are our, our top fundraisers right there. Go to ksat.com slash no shave for more. By the way, Team KSAT is still number two in the country on the No Shave November website. And our very own Mike Ostrage is number five in the country for individual fundraising this year. Way to go, Mike, yeah. and everybody else. And thank you so much if you contributed any amount to our campaign. Yeah, a big thank you to all the viewers out there. It's pretty cool because the goal was 10,000 and we are well ahead of that. We're doing great. Again, ksat.com slash no shave for more on the links. And also you'll find uh, updates and all our stories as to why we are contributing this year. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Let's go ahead and take a look outside with a live cam. Uh, things are warming up a little bit. 65 degrees doesn't really feel like Thanksgiving yet. No, it doesn't. Uh, it it uh, will feel a little bit cooler tomorrow. By the way, mark your beard. Spot on, brother. Looks good. <laughs> nice. Thank you. Thank you. You too, RJ. Yeah. It's all looking good, man. <laughs> yeah. You're coming up, man. I'm yours, feeling. yours too. I'm better at dishing Eighth out place. compliments than taking them. So <laughs> sorry about that. Well, no, it's all good. Uh, proud of all the KSAC guys Me too. for doing it this year. Uh, let's look at travel impacts. Uh, you know, Steph mentioned that uh, things are going to change a little bit tomorrow. Today, not a big deal. You know that there's a lot of people traveling, so there's going to be some delays in that sense. But as far as weather goes, just some slight impacts here across the middle part of the country. As we get into tomorrow, there'll be some moderate impacts, maybe Houston and San Antonio, maybe up in the Great Lakes. But all in all, this has been a pretty quiet stretch of weather here for most of the country. So there's not a lot of weather issues when it comes to that. Lows this morning were in the 50s, 53 here in San Antonio, 54 Bernie Stage, 56 in Kerrville. It was uh, 60 in Del Rio this morning, so much, much warmer than yesterday, uh, due in large part to that moisture that has surged in. Right now we're in the mid-60s here in town, 60s around Bear County, still quite a bit of cloud cover, and those clouds will stick around today. Mold is low, 380, no big deal in the pollen count. There's the forecast, 75 by this afternoon. We will add in some rain chances later tonight into tomorrow. Another look at that forecast, which includes that cold front coming up in just a few minutes, guys. Justin, thank you. By the way, nationally, No Shave November has raised over $440,000 this year for numerous cancer charities. Again, we've got uh, frontage row blocked off there. Uh, looks like we've got a bunch of utility trucks out there, too. It's been like this for quite a while, but this is out there at 10 uh, East at 1604. Main lanes not affected. Yeah, Stephen was covering this all morning long. Mm -hmm. It looks like things are still moving slowly there. And San Antonio travelers will soon have a new food option at the airport out at the vending machine. A popular spot to take those holiday selfies reopens just in time for Christmas. The always dashing R.J. Marquez joined <laughs> us live this morning with those stories trending oh, man. on KSAT.com. I miss you guys. I miss you guys, especially miss because of that, those intros right there. <laughs> I miss you too. Yeah, definitely miss you guys. Was out of town a little bit, but uh, glad to be back on Good this morning. Back. And we're talking about new food option that's going to be on the menu for anyone traveling this holiday season out of San Antonio International Airport. How about vending machine pizza? Yes, vending machine pizza. Basil Street Pizza is set to open its new vending machine on December 1st at our airport. The company recently posted on Facebook they were installing the vending machine online there. Basil says its vending machine can get you a hot slice of pie or even a 10 inch pizza in just three minutes. Very cool. Pizza options include the classics such as cheese, pepperoni, and supreme, but they also have rotating options like breakfast and buffalo chicken, and that right there was that post that they had from the airport. So pizza prices range from about five to 15 bucks, and there are a handful of these pizza vending machines around Texas, but this is the first at an airport. The company calls this the future of pizza, guys. Would you do it? <laughs> On the fly? Yeah. On the yep. fly, yes. At Ready to airport? take flight. <laughs> sure. Yeah. yeah. Especially if the line is busy at yes. one of the other places. Yes. That's always the thing that I always want to grab something before, and then you look at the line, you're like, yeah, I'm not going to make the boarding call. So This might really. be a better option. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So it's good stuff there. We'll see. December 1st is when it opens up there. Okay. All right, guys. One of San Antonio's most Instagrammable, yes, Instagrammable spots mm -hmm. is back in time just for the holidays, or is just back for the holidays. The Flower Vault reopens Saturday with a 
pop-up location at Highway 281 North near Loop 1604. So there are a dozen installations located throughout the Flower Vault, including seven flower-themed rooms and five Christmas-themed rooms. You see some pictures there. The Flower Vault was forced to close last year, of course, due to the pandemic, but has reopened just for weekends. So it's going to be Saturday and Sunday, and you can head out there through the end of December, mostly December 19th. They're not going to be open past that, but you have to buy tickets. General admission is about 20 bucks, and there's also a weekend that you can take your pet out there to get those holiday picks with Fido and the family as well. The so, spots are popular year round, but especially mm -hmm. this time of year. Yeah, I've only seen stuff on social media with this, and mm -hmm. so got, definitely got to check it out. Seems like an easy way to get like a Christmas card done or something. Yeah, if you I agree. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, very postable. Absolutely. Okay, guys, so sticking with the holiday theme, Buddy the Elf from the hit movie will be in San Antonio starting this Friday as Elf the Musical opens at the Woodlawn Theater. The musical is based on the 2003 holiday classic starring Will Ferrell, who played Buddy, the young orphan who mistakenly crawls into Santa's bag of gifts and is transported all the way to the North Pole. He's of course raised as an elf, but doesn't realize that he's human, then goes on a journey to find his family and true identity. The director of the show talked with us about the importance of having these shows back in San Antonio. What we missed last year for Christmas is what this show fully embodies. It's about family, it's about Christmas, it's about just the Christmas joy that we all missed last year. I know a lot of them are super excited to be returning to in-person shows and seeing all the performers that they love and adore. Um, so it's gonna be a really magical night. All right, that was Chris Rodriguez there. He is the director of uh, uh, this musical as well, and you can get tickets online right there at the Woodlawn Theater. And remember, this is a community-based show, so all these performers are mostly local, including all the children who are going to be playing all those elves on stage. Aww. And don't be a cotton-headed ninny mug. Oh, I was going to say it. <laughs> silence your phone <laughs> yes. while at the show. Yes. <laughs> I, I looked that up, and that's apparently um, when your brain is full of cotton, right? That's what Will Ferrell kind of yeah. refers that's to. That's about so. the dirtiest thing he says in the movie. <laughs> Yeah. And that's okay. Other than son of a nutcracker. Yeah, it works. Good times. It works. A, lo a lot of quotes there. Yeah, right. very quotable movie. Yes. Check it out, Woodlawn Theater, this weekend. Thank you Thank very you much, RJ. Much. Good to have you back, sir. Thanks, guys. 942, about 66 degrees. You're watching GMSA at 9. And the travel chaos expected to be worse today than it's been in nearly two years. What to expect if you're making last-minute travel arrangements after the break. And welcome back. It's about 946. Here's another live oh. look at the Los Angeles International Airport. Oh my goodness, that's look terrible. At all that. I see a lot of rental car and shuttle vans <laughs> there, but I mean that's oh. a ton of traffic at what is that? 8 for sorry, 746 in the, right, in the morning Pacific time. Ouch. Wow, this is the kind of day it's gonna be, and we're expecting long lines uh, for pickups yes. at San Antonio International as well today. Yeah. As busy, Steven, but Steve, not that busy. <laughs> exactly. As Stephen Cavazos would always say, pack your patience. It's a good one. All right, the great Thanksgiving exodus, by the way, underway this morning. We were just talking about it. This is expected to be the busiest day of the week to depart for your holiday destination. ABC's Trevor Alt has more. America's airports bustling as the Thanksgiving travel rush is underway. We feel good. Nervous for her, her first time flying. TSA expecting pre-pandemic passenger levels. More than 2 million people flying today alone. The top destinations Orlando, Anaheim, New York, and Dallas. And travelers already seeing lengthy lines as pandemic restrictions ease. Especially with the holiday weekend, they should have more staff on board. But those crowds will be putting the system to the test. Just weeks removed from Southwest and American Airlines abruptly canceling thousands of flights, though both the TSA and every major airline having bulked up staffing insist they're ready for the rush. One of the interesting things is the eight busiest travel days since the pandemic began are all going to happen between November 19th and November 30th. Naturally, experts say if you're traveling, you should leave yourself extra time to get through security and maybe consider avoiding peak travel times, typically in the afternoon. Book that first flight of the day if you can. If you don't mind getting up early, you're much less likely to be affected by a big cancellation event if you're flying out at 7.30 in the morning than if you're flying out at night. And remember, as busy as it's going to be today, it's going to be even busier at airports for the return flights. Saturday, Sunday, Monday. In fact, Sunday's two and a half million passengers is expected to be the highest total since the pandemic began. Trevor Alt, ABC News, LaGuardia Airport. I'm going to give away my travel secret. You are? Yeah. Okay, I, I think am. they'll be appreciated. If you're going anyway today and you have hardly any luggage, like a, like a small carry-on bag, 
as you're getting picked up, as soon as the car walk up to departures, have them meet you at departures mm -hmm. versus arrivals because arrivals is packed. That's right. But if you're willing to take a flight of stairs or the escalator up, that's your better option. Yes. Now everybody's going <laughs> to rush to departures. Just don't linger. Just yeah. don't linger. That's for yeah. sure. If All you're right. quick about it. That's yeah. smart. That's good advice. I mm -hmm. never thought about that, but that, that would work. Mm -hmm. Yes. Just have to be prepared. Now it's going to flip because Mark, Mark spilled <laughs> Or maybe it'll oh, be split. Sorry. Split sorry even. about that. <laughs> hey, but then maybe arrivals will get less yeah, crowded. Yeah, you just yeah. keep See, it all worked out it, in the wash, didn't it? It'll work out, yeah. <laughs> see, it'll be appreciated. Yes, uh, yes. Hey, guys, we're going to see some, maybe some travel issues tomorrow morning in the sense that we're going to get some showers and storms moving in here. I don't think it's going to be that big of a deal, but... Uh, keep in mind, we are going to see some changes for Thanksgiving Day. Time lapse this morning shows the clouds moving back in. That's all because the moisture is moving back in. And we've got the, that good low cloud deck setting up. 65 degrees at the airport. Dew point is at 58. Southerly winds at about 10 miles per hour. Winds can be a little bit breezy today from time to time. But they're going to be really strong tomorrow. We're going to see some gusts of 35, I think, uh, on your Thursday. And there's like the satellite picture. So. We've got that low, low cloud deck stretching from San Antonio to Hondo Bandera down to Uvalde and Eagle Pass and Del Rio. If you're east of San Antonio, sun is out. Gonzales, Beeville, Pleasanton, Floresville, you're looking at mostly sunny skies right now. I do think the clouds will start to thicken up and fill in a little bit more as we get into late this afternoon and this evening. Rain showing up across parts of far west Texas, New Mexico, also up across parts of Colorado. That is associated with our cold front which is uh, starting to make uh, some movement south here. Dew points still pretty low up there across the Texas Panhandle, but we're seeing the moisture really surge in here for South Texas. And dew points locally have now made it into the 50s and 60s, and that's when you start to feel it a little bit more. That sets the stage, right? As this front comes in, we'll have enough moisture to work with to generate some showers and storms. Temperature wise, 65 at the airport, 63 Hondo, 73 right now, Pleasanton, 66 in Katua. Forecast for today, we get up to 75, mostly cloudy. Southerly winds 10 to 15. We will start to add in some rain chances this evening and more so tonight. 60% chance of showers, maybe a st storm overnight. Don't be surprised if you hear a few rumbles of thunder. Severe weather is not anticipated, but we could see some pockets of heavier rain. Here's how it plays out in the forecast. Showers, few storms start to develop. This is 1 a.m., so this is the overnight period. And then as that front moves in, we think 7 a.m. it'll be in the hill country. And then by 9 a.m., moving through San Antonio, we'll get a broken line of showers and storms with that. Behind it, the winds pick up. We just get some clouds, and the rain starts to push south by midday. So I really think the rain's probably winding down here in San Antonio by lunchtime and the evening hours should be just fine. Now, I know this model still shows some showers, but I think that those will stay south of San Antonio and that we'll just be left with, again, mostly cloudy conditions. Here's the timeline. So we've got uh, the good chances of rain early, then noontime 30% chance of rain, but it's mostly ending. Temperatures fall into the 50s and then maybe rebound a little bit, especially if we see some sun late in the day, close to 60 before falling back into the 50s and eventually 40s by Friday morning and all day tomorrow, windy. Gusts to 35 miles per hour are possible, but sustained winds probably in the range of 15 to 25 out of the north. Extended forecast we will go 60 Friday, 57 Saturday, another decent chance for some showers, 65 on Sunday, and it does warm back up next week. We'll be right back. A quick look at the roads with TransGuide. Uh, there again, there's I-10 East at Loop 1604. Been problems there all morning, and it looks like it's still being held up there. And one last look at the forecast here. We'll be in the mid-70s today, mostly cloudy skies, but that chance of rain kicks in tomorrow morning with the cold front, and we'll get some gusty winds. We should see some clearing late tomorrow afternoon, so it's mainly a morning thing. Temperatures will be chilly tomorrow. Guys. All right. If we don't see you early tomorrow morning, several of us will be here to get your holiday started. Happy yeah. Thanksgiving from our entire KSAT 12 family.